Hello everyone, this is Jacob from NextGen, and welcome to Understanding Access Control List video number two, Extended IP Access Control List. We'll start by covering the general ACL rules. These rules were also mentioned in the first video, but they always apply to any type of access list. First, we will have to create the access list. Before we apply the access list, we will need at least one permit statement due to the implicit deny. Access control lists are processed from top to bottom. We need to put our more precise statements at the top of the list. And then we can only have one ACL per protocol, per interface, and per direction when we apply. Next, we need to talk about some specific rules when it comes to extended IP access control lists. First off, the numbered range is different. With standard, it was 1 to 99 for the basic number range. With extended, it's 100 to 199, with an expanded range of 2,000 to 2,699. All extended IP access control lists are filtered based on the source, destination, protocol, and the port. And in this situation, we're going to be applying our access control list closest to the source. When we did standard, we applied them closest to the destination. For extended ACLs, we always apply them closest to the source. We're able to stop the routers down the line from having to process unnecessary information. In global configuration mode, to create our access list, we will use the access list command, followed by the number, so we could use 101, followed by permit or deny, and then the protocol and this protocol can either be IP or we can break it down into TCP, UDP or ICMP. So after we put the protocol we need to put the source IP or network followed by the source wildcard mask. Next we put the destination IP or network and the destination wildcard mask and then optional at the end we will put EQ for equals and then the optional port or service. For example, if we wanted to apply the traffic to Telnet, we would type EQ23, whereas 23 is the port for Telnet. For a lot of these ports, you can also instead type the actual service. So for Telnet, we could type the word Telnet instead of typing 23. When we move on to applying the access list, it's going to be exactly the same as standard access list. So anytime you're applying an access list, whether it's standard or extended, it's always the same commands. Just to go back over it, we would go into the interface configuration mode when we go to apply an access list to an interface and type IP access dash group and the number and the direction, which is in or out. To apply that to a line, a VTY line, for example, we would type access dash class followed by the access list number and then also the direction. For VTY lines, normally you will be typing in, as we would like to apply most access lists inbound when the traffic is coming into the VTY lines. So let's go ahead and look at the requirements we have for our exercise. Here we have our requirements. First, we're going to prevent the host 192.168.50.50 from accessing network 10.10.10.0. This is similar to one of the exercises we did with standard access lists, but you will see that the commands and the application is going to be different. Second, we're going to prevent network 10.10.10.0 from accessing any non-secure web pages. Third, we will allow only network 10.100.15.32 to configure each one of these routers via their VTY lines using only SSH. Requirement number one, again, prevent host 192.168.50.50 from accessing network 10.10.10.0. In order to meet this requirement, we will first need to create an access list. We will also need to think about which router we will be using this access list on. Since all extended IP ACLs are applied closest to the source, we need to look at our source traffic. The source traffic is coming from this host here, 192.168.50.50. Closest to the source will be this router here, router A, and the closest interface will be FA0.0, so that's where we'll be applying it. So in order to create this list to match this requirement, we need to type access-list 101 deny IP as our protocol because we're denying all traffic from this host. And then the host 192.168.50.50 and the destination 
10.10.10.0 with wildcard mask 0.0.0.255. When we're looking at our wildcard mask, we need to understand that it's the inverse of the subnet mask. Whereas the subnet mask for the network 10.10.10.0 is 255.255.255.0. In this case, we will use the inverse to apply it to the access list, which is 0.0.0.255. We will then need to add in a permit statement because there's an implicit deny in all access lists. So we need to type access list 101 permit IP and then any followed by another any. This is any source and any destination. Moving on to applying the list, as we said before, we're going to access interface fast ethernet 0 slash 0 and apply the list using command IP access group 101N. That means any traffic coming from 192.168.50.50 will enter FA 0 slash 0 and be run against the access list 101. Once it does that and it's trying to access this network 10.10.10.0, it will match the access list and the traffic will be denied. Moving on now to requirement number two. Requirement number two is prevent network 10.10.10.0 from accessing any non-secure web pages. Now if we think about this we can look and say the traffic from 10.10.10.0 to get out to any type of web page would be over the internet, right? Well, your organization could have internal web pages, and in this case, we want to apply this to any non secure web page. So let's look at the configurations required to do this. We know that 10.10.10.0 will be sending traffic through router B. That means we will be applying this access list on router B, interface fast Ethernet 0 slash 0, since that's closest to the network 10.10.10.0. For the commands, we need to be in global configuration mode and type access-list 101 deny, in this case, TCP because web traffic that is non-secure uses TCP port number 80. So that's deny TCP 10.10.10.0 with the wildcard mask of 0.0.0.255 to any destination equaling port number 80. And then we need to finish off this access list with access list 101 permit IP any space any for any source and any destination, just like we did in our previous access list. To apply these commands in router B, we need to access interface FA 0 slash 0. And once we're in interface configuration mode, type IP access dash group 101 in. That means any time any host on this network tries to access a regular non-secure web page, the traffic will be denied, unless it is within its own network. The reason why I say unless it's within its own network is because for traffic inside of a single network, it does not have to traverse the router. So we need to keep that in mind as well. Let's move on now to our third requirement. Requirement number three, only allow network 10.100.15.32 to configure both routers via Secure Shell. What we're going to have to do for this is to log into each one of these routers individually and create our new access list and apply it to, you guessed it, the VTY lines. However, this time, when we create the list, it is going to be signifying SSH only. So let's go ahead and look at the commands for this one. In both router A and router B, we will need to create the following access list. Access-list 102 permit TCP 10.100.15.32 with a wildcard mask of 0.0.0.31 to any destination equaling port SSH. Now instead of typing SSH here, we could have also used 22 because SSH is TCP port 22. Now if you're still wondering how I got this wildcard mask, I took the regular mask from the 10.100.15.32 network, which is 255.255.255.224, and I subtracted that from 255.255.255.255. That gives you 0.0.0.31, which is the wildcard mask. This means that any host in the network 10.100.15.32 will match this statement. 
Moving on to applying the list in both of these routers, we need to access the VTY lines using the command line VTY 0 space 4 and type access dash class 102 in. So anytime the ho a host on this network 10.100.15.32 tries to access inbound on the router's VTY lines on port 22 SSH, it will be permitted. Any other traffic trying to do the same or any traffic from that network trying to access Telnet port will be denied. And that's due to the implicit deny at the end of every access list statement. Well, that wraps up the video, part two, extended IP ACLs. I would like to thank you all for viewing and ask you please to visit our Twitter account at www.twitter.com slash nextgent and please visit our blog www.nextgent.com slash blog. You can also find us on Facebook where all of our blog posts will be posted as well. I would like to thank you all for viewing and have a good day.